So here we are. I see that I have been cast as the Scarlet Woman. No typecasting there. What about you, Stuart, Professor Plum? Well, it's always nice to have a good pair of professors, I think, when you're playing games like this. So I'm Colonel Mustard, yeah. I've long wanted a career in the army, to be fair. <laughs> right. Now, I believe that uh, I get to start. Yes. And if you don't want me to start, I'll fight you for it. OK. You going to fight her? I'd sooner not. I've seen what happens if you do. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Oh. Dun, dun, so, dun. Dun. so, I think it was Professor Plum Ooh. in the lounge with the candlestick. Okay, that's what you're saying. So, it goes round and if I have anything that says otherwise, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Zip. Nothing. Don't you look, you naughty man. Thank you. Hmm. I believe um, when we enter a room, we're supposed to ask one of these questions. One of these deep insightful one questions. One of these deep insightful, okay. insightful yeah. questions. Ask away. That, that has profound impact on our lives as Is crime writers. When did you last have a fish supper? What would your dream job have been if you weren't an author? Astronaut or footballer. Right. There's still time. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly not for the footballer. <laughs> Possibly not. <laughs> or astronaut, let's be fair. But you might as well roll your dice well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I would have been a rock star. A rock star or a Hollywood superstar. You're doing really well with um, these ones. I know yeah. one. I'm actually knocking out of the park. Yeah. What, about, what about you, Val? What would your uh, dream job have been? I would have liked to have been Joni Mitchell, really. Ooh, but the job time. is taken. Well, <laughs> that's true. She's older than me. <laughs> what are you after now? you go, yeah. <laughs> Right. Cheeky little secret passage man. Okay. Right. And so I would like to call into the conservatory. Uh-huh. Mm, summon. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Peacock with the spanner. <laughs> can't help you there, mate. Please silence. Can't I can help you. Yes. <gasps> I think we all have hit on the same strategy here. <laughs> have you got a question from the conservatory? Ah, we do, but yes. I'm fiddling with my card at the moment. I'll, I'll ask it. Fiddle away. If that's all right. Right. What's your favourite writing space and writing time? <laughs> In the whole of space and time. The whole of space and time. Where would you like to write it? 1632 is a good one. Yeah. Um, I... I quite like writing on trains, actually. Do you? I do. I, I don't. I can't do that. Uh, I find trains quite. I don't know. There's something about the nice that forward but motion. What about and people nebbing over your shoulder. Mm. Oh, That's just it. Elbow them in the face. <laughs> 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 I hate trains. What generally? You know, uh, okay. I spend so much time because my deadlines are deadline, 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 that I I have never had a train journey in about twelve years that I haven't been working on. Right. And I loathe trains now. <laughs> Because I get on the train, I open up the laptop, put on the headphones, and I set an alarm for when I have to pack stuff up to get off the train. Wow. Usually mm -hmm. to get on another train. So it's just, it's, it, it's like a horrible mobile office. What I like about it is that it's cut off from the rest of, of my life. You know, I sit there, open up the laptop, put in the earphones, and away I go. And I'm just in a wee bubble. And I feel so virtuous when I get off the train. <laughs> because I've actually had this, this train journey and I've done something useful. There's several more words in your yeah. <laughs> well, no, I once, I once wrote two and a half thousand words on a Saturday night going from Bath to Newcastle. Wow. I wish I could do that. No, I, don't, I, I would just like to write anywhere with a view. I, I, mm. My office is in the loft, which you have right. to go up a ladder to get into and there's no windows. Right. So it's quite good for not being distracted, but also I wouldn't like I've been at like taught at Moniac Moor and the desks oh, yeah. are always looking out over the beautiful like hills That's, and stuff. It's like, yeah. this is great. But yeah. then you do just sort of stare at the window. And yeah. Like, but time of day to write. Um, in the dining room, never before 11 in the morning. 
Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm a I slow write, starter. I'm I write slow in the morning, starter. actually. I write in the morning. So I get a, a shot to make a disgusting suggestion. Okay, yeah. I'll be nice to you. I think it was Colonel Mustard <laughs> in the dining room with the rope. Interesting. I've got some information for you. Thank you. And, and we do get... Um, oh, a question. A question, yeah. don't we? Stuart, you can ask this one since it's the last one. Uh. How would you flesh out the backstory of your Cluedo character? Do you like that? <laughs> yeah. For ten points. I don't know. She's Miss Scarlet. People judge her by her surface, <clears throat> her glamour, her her apparent uh, looseness of behaviour. But behind that, really, she's a quiet and modest person who puts on this facade to cover her secret pain. Don't know what her secret pain <laughs> is, right? Just but you know, just some pain in that. Either that, or she is like a complete floozy <laughs> with scarlet yeah. nails and and, and scarlet Aye. lipstick. Okay. The name's a bit on the nose though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, imagine you put that in your book. I'm going to call her Miss Scarlet. Yeah. It's like, hmm. Your editor would be like straight through. Yeah, yeah, Too yeah. on the nose. Call her Tarty Mc... <laughs> Farty Bottom or something. It's just, I'm no. using that in the next week. Tarty, 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 Tarty Bottom. Bottom. I hope it will be a pure courtesy off. <laughs> You're going to have a big mess in the acknowledgements. Uh, anyway, Colonel Mustard, while he's a bluff old cove, but actually secretly underneath, he's got suffering really badly from PTSD. Because <laughs> he got his leg blown off in Iraq. How <laughs> <laughs> about that? It's all right. Yeah. yeah. Professor Plum isn't his real name. It is a nickname due to an unfortunate habit that he has when his hands are in his pockets. Um, his real name is Professor... He carries fruit around with him every day. He, he does, he does, he does, yes. yes. Um, he's a pathologist. Ah. He's a pathologist. Professor Plum the pathologist. Of course he is. the pathologist. Because yes. it alliterates. <laughs> Lucifer Plum would that be? Ooh, <laughs> ooh. I was going to go for Euphemia, and he's really embarrassed about this first name, but I like that, I like that. Nice. Right, is it my shot? It is. So, can I just have a guess you without rolling, if I'm in here already? I think you can, I think yeah. Can. You can do that for it's your turn, yeah. Aye. Okay, yep. I'm going to say the Reverend Green with a gun oh. in the lounge. Okay. Got it. Check. You don't trust no, me, no, do you? No, I don't trust you. You don't trust me. Well, he has met you. <laughs> well, Stuart still hasn't told us what time he likes to write. Um, I basically do most days all day. Five. That's because you write such long books. How long was that big blockbuster one of yours? 184,000 words. Jeez. It is two books, though, in, in one. I had really hoped that uh, my editor was going to get to it and go, this is two books, isn't it, Stuart? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> we should cut these in half, shouldn't we? Yes, we should, and then that would be one another book from my contract gone. <laughs> and and it, know, would, it, would, it would have saved them the expense of having to issue wrist supports with the book. <laughs> well... It was very heavy. That's what Kindles are, are there for. It's your shot, Valerie. Yeah. <laughs> other electronic books are available. They are. OK, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Right, one. I've got a one. What do you want? Da, da, da. Not da, da, in the billiard room, da, da. To the billiard room, I shall summon the Reverend Green. And he goes, to the billiard room you go, my lad, to the billiard what? room you go. <laughs> and the candlestick. <laughs> With a candlestick. What room is that? Oh, that's mine. Oh, we've got to... It's time for a question. Another cheesy one? Val, why did you choose a career in crime writing? Because uh, I was useless at everything else, basically. Um, no, I, I, I read a lot of crime fiction <coughs> growing up. I, I got the Agatha Christie bug uh, quite early on. I used to stay at my grandparents a lot, and that was the only book they had apart from the Bible. It was Miss Marple's debut, Murder at the Vicarage. And I got hooked. Uh, and I wanted to be a writer, because I discovered when I was about nine or ten that people got paid to write books. I thought that would be a good thing to do. Wow. Uh, I, I, I had no concept of that until I was basically a grown-up, that like, yeah. actually someone had to write that and mm. they might get paid. Well, so I, read it, I, read, I, read, I read it in a book. <laughs> <laughs> this girl's school stories I was reading, and one of the characters oh, okay. grew up to be a writer. And in one of the books, she gets a letter and she opens it up and it's a cheque from her publisher. And I was going like, a cheque from your publisher? You get paid money for doing this? Fantastic. And then you started doing it and realised. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Indeed, I started doing it and realised that was not, I was not going to make a living out of that. But um, 
I read a lot of crime fiction, and so ultimately, after a couple of false starts at other kinds of writing, it seemed the obvious way to go because I kind of knew how it worked. So, would you go back to something? One of your false starts? Um, no, not really. They weren't very good. So there's no other genre that you think? Well, I don't. I, like I, I did. I did. I did uh, have some early success writing for the theatre. But I didn't really know what I was doing, but I think in the intervening period I have learned a bit more about how the nuts and bolts work and I have actually just finished the second draft of a play for Oren Moore in Glasgow, so really? we'll see how that comes. Very it's cool. not a crime, it's not a crime yeah. story, it's, it's a, a heartwarming and moving story of um, Scottish life. Really? Well, no really, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, where are we? Did you? It's my shot. Yes. Right, so what about you, Stuart? Any crime writing? I just did it for fun and was quite surprised when things actually started happening. A six! I can't worry. I, 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 I just got a dog. I just got a dog there, I got a one. It's good that's all to become synonymous with me. It's that's excellent. I'm happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Four. Uh, you can go to the library. I'm just about to go to the library. Where everybody should be going. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would like to summon. <laughs> the summoning. Yeah, by like Stuart McBride. Right. the summoning. <laughs> I've got another 185,000 more. <laughs> I, I will summon. Uh, be, you know, so I've like, summoned Miss Scarlet, because you're cheeky, with the revolver. Does anybody have a fish? I cannot help you. Oh, I've just seen a card I didn't know I had. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is going well. It's made half of my guess is completely pointless. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Ah, it's, it's, it's the penetrating perspicacity <laughs> of the you're crime writer. You're supposed to pay attention and everything. Uh -huh. Oh, oh no, no, yeah. someone told me about this. Yeah, it's like following the clues in that. Ah, clues. Let's see if you do any better with the question. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just say this is a very, very silly game? Have you ever known a murder investigation where they don't know who was killed, where, or with what? Where's the body? Well, yeah, Why are we here? What are we investigating? Somebody we don't know the, has died. Is that the question? Where's the back, what's the backstory? What, what's the point? What's the point? Well, it could be like, you know, there's a body floating in the river, but it hasn't drowned. And the police have not yet been able to identify the body. Or well, it could be just skeletal remains. You could still make a fairly educated guess well, whether it's male or female. Black. Sue Black could yeah. make an educated yeah. guess, yeah. but I don't know if we could. Well, I think, I think we could make a fairly good one because we have spoken to Sue Black about many, many things. Oh, well, yes. With calipers. <laughs> well, you spoke to her with calipers. Oh, yes. Okay. With I broke a hyoid thing. bone once. Did what? you? I, I, she was showing me a hyoid bone and she was saying, look, look, it flexes. This is the wee bone in the throat yeah, yeah. that breaks if you strangle somebody. So she says, look, you can see the flex in it. So she, she gave it to me to try and so I'm like, I'm going with the flex. Boom. Snap. <laughs> 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 That's my favourite bone! That's my favourite bone! We're not having soup tonight! <laughs> we need get much soup off a hyoid bone. It's, it's like the chicken wishbone. Uh, okay. Cluedo is very evocative of the so-called Golden Age crime writers. Who is your favourite classic crime writer and why? <laughs> I used to be on the radio, can you tell? <laughs> really? And what radio? Oh, only Radio North Sound, only um, um, adver adverts and voiceovers for things like the shackle point on the rear of the FSU has to be fixed down like this. Not doing so can cause a build-up of pressure that may lead to death. <laughs> beep! <laughs> they just have to do the beep as well. They couldn't even afford an electronic beep. They couldn't even beep. afford a beep. Jeez. Well, if the books ever start tailing off, you've always got that to fall back on. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, so uh, Chris, so Golden Age, I, was, I wasn't really, I wasn't grew up on that stuff actually, yeah. um, so I've not, I mean I've read a few Agatha Christie's and what have you, but I mean I would either say bef like before that Robert Louis Stevenson, mm. or which I, I was a big fan of, or then after that some of the American stuff like Chandler and Hammett, mm -hmm. that would be my thing, but the, the sort of the, the English Golden Age kind of passed me by a little bit just because I was never really exposed to it. Yeah, I kind of cut my teeth on Christie and I still admire her, her, her capacity to turn a plot like nobody else. Yeah. You know, it's like probably about 10 of her books when she was like absolutely on top form. And I think that they're still worth worth looking at for, a, for somebody who wants to be a crime writer, just because it, it shows you the craft, really 
how how to tell a story. Yeah. Um, but I think of, of of all the sort of earlier uh, crime writers in the, the among the British crime writers, I'd I'd go back to Josephine Tay. Okay. Uh, you know, and I think she's a terrific writer. She was interested in the kind of things that nobody else was writing about at that point in, in, in British crime fiction. I mean, she was interested in issues of gender and identity. So she was writing these books back in the 30s and the 40s and that. Um, and I just love, she, for most of the time, she was Beth McIntosh, you know, this Inverness housewife looking after her, her father. And then she'd get on the night sleeper and she'd arrive at Euston and she'd get her furs out of storage <laughs> and she'd become <laughs> Josephine Tay, crime writer. And sort of, I have all these glamorous friends in London and I just love that thing. If you, you get on the train one person and you get yeah. off at the other end, somebody completely different. Do you think, do you think she was spending the train journey writing as well? Like you? <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping or drinking, as yeah. people do on the sleeper. Yeah. Drinking Gibsons. I'm going to pick somebody Gibsons. that you might not expect. A.A. A. Milne. Oh, okay. yes. House Red House. Did actually write yeah. um, crime fiction only once, and I think he was worried it was going to be too successful mm. and overshadow the other books that he wanted to write. Yes, we all worry about being too successful, yeah. don't we? Uh -huh. <laughs> it keeps me awake yeah. at night. And then, of course, he goes on to write Winnie the Pooh, yeah. and that just yes. well, nobody remembers any of the plays he's written or uh -huh. any of the other things. It's, good, yeah. it's you, I think, isn't it? Is it? So we're so on top of this, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. We're nailing it. Oh, <coughs> and another five. We're on a library. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I'll just slip into the hall. <laughs> Nobody's looking. Can I just go one, two, three, and then just look? No. <laughs> okay, hall. I'm in the hall. Uh, right. Let's go with the dagger. So, Mrs. White with the dagger in the hall. Full of information, Stuart, aren't you? Okay, got it. But yeah. we have another question. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. The hall. Yes. Right. Okay, what have we got here? Best voiceover. Why do you think Scotland has produced so many great crime writers? Uh, it's haggis. Fish uppers. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's the fuel of crime writers. Except for the haggis. Which is the most vile and what? revolting. Oh, come no. on. Yeah, the can, only thing that, that makes haggis edible that? is revoke your, revoke your membership with the tartan no, 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 no. <laughs> you, you And you with the stovies thing. What do you mean Stovies you were the Stovies thing? What's that? Stovies well, a a proud. traditional Scottish fair. You know, uh -huh. you were the Stovies champion of the world. World Stovies champion, 2014, making not eating. Oh, I did. Before I you say that. Yeah, sorry. No, I, I, I forgot, I've forgotten about I, your Stovies. Yes, yeah, so it's like you should be. You should be like. But no haggis. No oh, haggis. That's tragic, guys. Yeah. So why do yeah, you think Scotland has produced so many great crime writers since in your case it's obviously not the haggis? Because we're a thrown bunch of buggers. Yes, yeah, thrown is the exact word, isn't it? That is what we are. We are just 100 percent thrown. Mm -hmm. Just on. Doesn't matter if you're MC Beaton or you or Ian or you yeah. or me, we all write Thrawn protagonists because it reflects our natural. This is really dull, isn't <laughs> it? Dull I, had it does. I had to explain that. To, I had to explain Thrawn to my American publishers because they got one of these Q and A's like you know, and what's your character like? And I said, well, she's Thrawn, yeah. and they're like, what is this Thrawn? What is this Thrawn? So come on then. How did you explain it to your American publisher? Well, um, twisted and difficult and cross-grained. Cross-grained's an American word, they like cross -grained. that one. Cross-grained? Yep, it's, it's a bit twisted. Do you think it's also maybe something to do with the fact that we are, as a nation, quite friendly and polite when we meet and interact with people? So we build up all that irritation and rage <laughs> that other other nations might just vent at the time. Yes, and we take it home and indeed, we write crime fiction yes, 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 there's, there's that. Um, Spill it out on the page. Mm. <laughs> okay. Because, uh, you know, Cut me up in the supermarket <laughs> freezer aisle, will you? With your four items or eight, five items or less! <laughs> touch, the ne touch the nerve there, Val. I feel better for Certainly that. Certainly do seem to have done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. I'd, I'd, you got five. I'd, I'd you got, got five. five. So. I got five, okay. So, one, two, three, four, five. Mrs. White in the hall. Is she going to do it by any means? By telekinesis? Stuart's, Stuart's belt. With <coughs> <laughs> the rope. With the rope. Okay. Okay, I've got nothing. I've got now. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, let's go here. I'm in the study. I'm going to have a guess at Colonel Mustard in there with lead pipe. Are you thinking, Stuart? Uh -huh. Okay. It's just, it's just, it's just okay. strategic game. Okay. Right. Got it. Oh, we got another question. Will I do this one? 
I think you should. What is the most unusual murder weapon you have used in a book, considered using, or heard about? Well, the famous extraordinary one is the uh, the Roald Dahl one with the leg of lamb, yeah. frozen leg of lamb, which feeds it to the she, police, yeah. and then roasts it and feeds it to the police, yeah. which is lovely, and poetic. <laughs> I think that the, my favourite one was an exploding uh, bottle of Weiss beer. Um, really? Yeah. Specifically Weiss beer. Weiss beer, because okay. it, um, there was a period where the German breweries were being really ecologically sound and, and using recycled glass to bottle um, all their beers. Um, the only problem was with, with Weiss beer, it's still a living beer, so if it gets too warm, the bottles were exploding. This was one of these things where it comes from something that actually happened to me. I was walking through my garage um, and one summer's afternoon and one of the bottles of Weiss beer that was stacked up in the kitchen, in the garage, right, exploded. And, and a shard of glass shot into my leg. It was excruciatingly painful. <laughs> and there was an awful lot of blood. Um, and uh, so I thought, well, you, you know, if that had been sitting on top of the fridge, that would have hit me in the neck, round about the place of the carotid. I thought if you had, uh, if you exploded a bottle, if you had an exploded bottle in the kitchen and then took a shard of glass and you stabbed it in the neck of your victim, uh -huh. that's what I did. Nice. I shan't tell you which book, because obviously that would be a spoiler. <laughs> mm. But it is in one of my 31 <coughs> novels. <laughs> Go read them. Aye. <laughs> what about you for murder weapons, Stuart? Actually, a, a ceremonial sex toy in a novella that I wrote that HarperCollins will not let me publish. A ceremonial sex toy? A ceremonial sex toy. Was that as opposed to a, an actual sex toy? It has certain ceremonial functions, shall we say. And while This is a family show. And while, <laughs> while, you're, while you're contemplating that, <laughs> I'm going to call Colonel Mustard to the hall with the dagger. Can't help you. Uh, can't help you. <laughs> what does that tell you? Can, so no, no, Colonel, Colonel Mustard, mustard uh, in the hall with the dagger. No. Nope. Mm. See, I just don't know whether or not to trust Doug anymore after, <laughs> he, after he loses a card and then finds it again. Mm. Yes, uh, but... That's my Did shot, we get your weirdest it? murder weapon? Oh, we no, didn't know. no, we didn't. No, uh, I'm not. I, I, yeah, I don't think I've got any mad murder weapons. The one that the, the, the logistics of body transport. I had to exact in that novel, Smokeheads, about some guys who wanted to set up a distillery on Isla. There's, someone's dead, and they have to try and move his body quite a long way. And I had them carrying it in a rolled up carpet. And Alan Guffey said to me, "No way! Could, it's like winter time and night. It's like no way can they carry a body in a rolled up carpet. That's ridiculous." Um, so I put them in a whiskey barrel and they roll them. That's better. Mm. Which That's is good. a lot easier. Because so. mm -hmm. it's normally less than 100 yards from where you park the car. What? That people are prepared to carry bodies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you usually find just for that. Yeah, a so lot harder than you think. This is it. Sod it. That's what, um, you know, Professor Dame Sue Black always says, the murder is easy, it's getting rid of the body that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she says. It's easy, comparatively easy to kill somebody Just get a in, chest in, in the heat of the in. moment, and then you've got a body. What do yeah. you do with a body? Do do that? That's always the hard bit. I Unless see. you've got a chest freezer that you're never going to open again, right. obviously. Um, but then you sell the house and you forget you've got the you chest freezer oh, in the garage. Dave, oh. Dave's, in the, Dave's in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> rookie mistake never dispose of the body where you live. Because yes. you can always be tied back to that location. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three, okay. One. Two, three. That was dramatic. Mm. I'll try to inject a bit of excitement. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, it's a dog. <laughs> Yay! Woo! Um, where can I go? Yeah, let's just go right here. It's exciting. Okay. I know. Sorry, I took far too long to play one shot. Oh, oh, it's tough sometimes. Tough sometimes. Six. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Go on then. Does he, do you, does he say what he, he thinks it is? He has to say what he thinks it is. He has to say what he thinks it is. Well, let's face it. <laughs> this lady here has been acting suspiciously since we started yeah. tonight. So much so I keep forgetting who she is. Mm. Yeah. I have seen her pretty much in every room, except for one that she is studiously avoiding. She just came for there. But... <laughs> she was just in there a minute ago. But do you know why she was in there? Well, presumably she was smelling the flowers, you know, because no, one should no, always take time to smell the flowers. What she was doing was hiding the murder weapon. The gold dagger. Go for your life. Dun, dun, dun. dun. dun, 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 dun so, this is 
Peacock in the conservatory with the dagger. Nope! We've got the dunce's cap, we like, have to sit in the corner. Or <laughs> well, the pointed blue one. <laughs> yeah. For, for that little you, have to, you have to... You are I know why as well. Why? I know why. Because somebody had a card that they forgot that they had. Oh. Keep Didn't they? Up. Keep your cards up. Keep your cards up. I don't want to cheat. Um. Aha. Aha. <laughs> 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 yes. Aha. <laughs> uh. It's dust. Probably not that. No, I don't it's know. It's probably nothing to do with no, that. I don't think I did. No, it's fine. Sorry, it's well, like, okay. You're no. just you're just grasping at straws. <laughs> no, I don't you're think I, to, I don't just, think just I am. Just own it. Just own your failure, Stuart. <laughs> just own am, it, you know? I am owning something. Okay, well, it is righteous indignation. What happens if we all get it wrong? <laughs> Do we have to toss like, a coin? It's like Hotel California. You can check out, you can never <laughs> leave. Or you can play forever. <laughs> No, I, I guarantee you, when 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 this is okay. looked back... <laughs> it's all right. On that bombshell. All right, now, now it's your turn. Did, did, uh, yeah. Hmm. Right, okay, it's me, is it? Yeah. So we know that that is not the solution. At least one element of that solution is wrong. Yeah. But we don't know which element or elements. It might all be wrong. It might all be wrong. You're being inscrutable. That would be... I have fewer scrutes to give now. Hmm? We're going to have to start making up questions now. You know that, oh, don't you? I'm going to go for it. Who? I'm going to go for <laughs> Mrs. Peacock with the dagger in the ballroom. Oh. But that's not strictly accurate. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh poor old I boy. I took it that wrong. That's, uh, well, you see... can't believe that. Are you going to go back and watch the filming of this and go, <laughs> YOU! YOU'RE THE ONE WHO LIED TO ME! <laughs> Uh, yes, just, Doug. This could go for I, I'm, I'm miles away from getting an answer yet. <laughs> I'll just take a guess and then... You have one, theoretically, unless you guess and get it uh, wrong. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to... Um, uh, Mrs. Peacock. Rope. Library. Read them out as you get them. Mrs. Peacock. <laughs> In the library. Can he do it? No. With the dagger! Oh, <laughs> we all fell! I was so close. Oh, I knew it was one of those. I had, to, I had to take a punt on one of the other. Oh, oh, there you go. We'll, we'll now get our crime writer credentials taken <laughs> from us. We'll, we'll no longer be allowed to attend oh. any event that's sponsored by the CWA, yeah, for example. Banned, basically. Actually, oh. I'm sure that I asked for conservatory and nobody said anything at all that round. Mm. Well, it wasn't me. Mm. I don't have the conservatory. I do, but the one that I'd forgot was the revolver. For the first shot. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to take the blame for that. I don't mind. I've crossed the conservatory off quite <laughs> early, so he must have showed it to me. It's a mystery. It is. Like, it a, is. like a good crime. Like a good crime. <laughs> Wrapped in an enigma. <laughs> that was Inside the, a crime novel. That was the twist at the very end. <laughs> yes, we're all rubbish. <laughs> 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 oh, dear.